Here is the story of how I spent £1,000 on this Easter egg. The story begins when Lucky Frog Studio was contacted by Pippa of Family Store Records and Gallery, who invited us to take over their gallery space. Everybody at Lucky Frog Studio then hopped into a meeting to discuss if we thought we had the time and capacity to be able to organise a show in less than six weeks. We all agreed that we could, and so we leapt straight into organising the next show. After the folklore show, we all felt very inspired, but also tired. And so we decided that whatever we did next had to be fun. And that's how we arrived at the title of the show. As soon as we decided a theme for the show, we then all took a pop at doing the branding for the exhibition. In the end, we all voted and agreed that Lizzie Lomax's branding was best suited for the fun show. We then put together a content calendar. This isn't very interesting, but if you are planning on putting on an exhibition, it's important that people know about it. So you need to make sure that you're shouting about it the loudest you can on socials. Whilst we were planning content for the show, we realized that April the 1st was coming up and we thought it would be quite funny to announce the show on April the 1st. April the 1st in the UK is also known as April Fool's Day. And this is a day where you're allowed to play pranks on people. And so the studio came up with a plan to pull a prank on our Instagram audience before then announcing our show. And this worked like an absolute gem. We basically lied to our Instagram audience and told them that we had been on Dragon's Den. And this was great because we got lots of comments, lots of DMs, lots of interest, and then later on in the day, we announced our exhibition. We all agreed that if you're going to announce a show about fun, that the announcement should also be fun. You're probably wondering, where does this egg come in? And I'm getting to it. Show organizing was going really well. We had got a bunch of sponsors, we had flyered all around Brighton, and we contacted a bunch of people seeing if they wanted to come to the show. Now I just needed to come up with an idea for an artwork. For a while I've wanted to make a t-shirt which is inspired by a board game, and I think this idea is perfect for the fun show. I really like the visual of somebody laying on a table whilst other people play a board game on their back, and I think that would be really fun to design the packaging like the counters, the rules, and the box that will accompany the t-shirt. When initially designing the t-shirt, I thought about all the games I enjoyed playing with my granddad when I was a child. I used to love playing snakes and ladders, and so I chose to base the t-shirt sign on that game. Once I had made a sketch I was happy with, I then cleaned up the drawing and then began working out the box design. Before designing the box, I needed to build one and figure out all the measurements. This took quite a while, but eventually I figured it out. I then worked out the box design, scanned it in, and cleaned it all up, making sure that all the dimensions were correct. Once everything was designed, I then needed to wait for the paper and the acetates to come back from the printers. And this is where everything went wrong. First off, I had a bunch of problems with getting stuff delivered. TNT had a cyber attack, which delayed my paper order. And then DPD tried to deliver my acetates to a petrol station in a completely different postcode to my studio space. By the time everything had arrived, I was left with three days to print everything. This was cutting it close. The first two days of printing went well, but when I laid down the first layer of ink, I noticed that the paper started to warp quite considerably. This caused problems with the registration, but it was too late to turn back. Day three rolled round pretty quickly, and this is where stuff went really, really wrong. I printed the first layer onto the back of the t-shirt and then cured the ink. I then exposed the next layer of the artwork onto the screen and rinsed it out. Whilst the screen was drying, I realized that the t-shirts had warped and I couldn't get the design to line up at all. Now usually I design artworks with a bit of give, but these t-shirts had walked too much. Nothing lined up and they looked awful, and I wasn't prepared to exhibit something that looked that bad. And so in a complete panic, I decided to abandon t-shirt printing, and instead I printed the designs onto paper and decided to exhibit just normal screen prints. And this is where the thousand pound egg comes in. This Easter egg came with the t-shirts that I screwed up. Those t-shirts cost the best part of 150 quid, the acetates for those t-shirts cost me 40 quid, and I've now paid for somebody else to print the t-shirts for me, which has cost me a total of 850 quid. So that's how I spent 1,000 pounds on this Easter egg. If you are vibing with the t-shirt design, or looking to help my brother out, those t-shirts are now here. The boxes are made, the rules are printed, I've even bought counters and dice which will come with every single t-shirt order, you can now grab a t-shirt from my online store. If you're wondering how the show went, it went really well. I'm really happy with how it all turned out. It was super nice to collaborate with everybody at Lucky Frog Studio again, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with them again in the future. It's a shame that my artwork didn't work out the way I wanted it to in time for the exhibition, but it is what it is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to grab a shirt, the link is down below, and I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.
Ugh, that tastes horrible.